I'm a big fan of the iPad. In fact, I use the iPad probably more than I even use my laptop. And if I could, I would use my iPad strictly because I think it's a more fun and productive and easy to use tool than even a computer. But a vital piece to using the iPad as much as I do and making it a key actual factor in your productivity is a great keyboard case. And to me, it really comes down to two great keyboard options. One of them is the obvious and it's Apple's, the Magic Keyboard. And then what I think is the best competitor, the Logitech Combo Case. This one's fairly new. This one's $300, this one's $200. And I wanna tell you what I think are the pros and cons between them both, and I'll tell you which one I think is actually the best case for the iPad. What I'm gonna do for this comparison is talk about the biggest pros and cons that I see for each keyboard case as it relates to the other one, because I do feel like these are the best competitors in terms of having full function with a trackpad, with the smart connector, so there's no Bluetooth connectivity and battery you have to worry about. I think these are the best options. There are a lot of keyboard cases out for the iPad, but a lot of them are Bluetooth, they have their own battery, you have to recharge them, you have to wait for connectivity. I'm gonna review these two because I think these are no question the most solid and most like a laptop in terms of experience. Specifically because of the trackpad and the fact that they are smart connectors, so all of the power for both of these keyboards comes from the smart connector on the iPad, so you never have to worry about charging them, which I think is huge. It also makes it way better when you connect it to your iPad because as soon as it's docked, it's immediately usable. There's no Bluetooth that you're having to wait to connect. That lag when you first open up a Bluetooth keyboard never exists. It's instant, always on, always powered, and it basically is just an extension of the iPad. This case is very, very nicely designed. It's sturdy, it's built like you'd expect with anything from Apple. It just works really, really well. And it feels just like a little mini MacBook Pro, but there are a few things I'm not crazy about. But let me first tell you what I really do like about this case. One of my favorite things about this case is the design and the manner that it is so simple to just take out of your case or your backpack, open it up just like a laptop, it's ready to be used and you're getting to work. You'll see when I talk about the Logitech that the opening process and the pulling of the kickstand behind it is just a little bit more cumbersome. You kind of have to like find the right spot to pull from and this just makes it really easy to just get to where you're going, drop it on the table, boom, you're right to work just like a laptop would be. I really like that because as someone who travels and moves around a lot, I'm doing this process quite a bit and I do like how easy this one is to make up and ready to use as soon as possible. That does come with some caveats in the design of this, which I'll talk about in a second, but I think that's a really nice design feature. In terms of the actual trackpad and the keys themselves, they are super, super nice to use. They feel very, very solid. The keys sound and feel really good, just like you'd expect from a laptop. No sort of delay at all. It just operates just like you'd expect. And it is a nice size. It feels good. The trackpad is easy to use. It's just a really good iPad experience that is laptop-like. Both of these keyboard cases do have have really nice trackpads and really nice keys. So I don't really think either one of them wins in that side of things, but they do feel different, but both of them feel great. One thing I really, really like about this case is that it has pass-through charging, meaning you can plug the USB-C into the case here instead of having to plug it directly into the iPad. Now, that may not sound like a big deal, and realistically it's not, but when you are using the iPad and making it feel more like a laptop, it's nice kind of having the cable out of the way and hidden really cleanly, and when you're ready to just pop it off and go use the iPad, you don't have to unplug because the pass-through charging is going into the case. So when you get back and you magnetize it right to the case, boom, it starts charging again and you can quickly move in and out between you know tablet mode and laptop style mode i really like that it's very clean with the logitech obviously you have your just standard way of charging right into the usb-c and then if you do obviously bring the ipad with you somewhere you do have to disconnect it so little thing but something i wanted to point out that pass through charging pretty slick little design so overall super super solid case but there are some things that i do not like about it the first one being actually the angle limitation. In the same way that this is designed very nicely, that you can open it up and get to work using it right away, you are limited to the angle. When it opens up in its full position, just like this, it cannot move any other direction except for that. You can't go any further. You can go a little bit shorter, but most of the time you're not looking for shorter. You're looking for kind of more of a a further reach because I found specifically if I'm sitting on my lap, for example, sometimes I kind of would prefer that it would be even a little bit more angled and it kind of has a very 
quick limitation of how far it can go. To some people, if you're using it on a desk, that's not a big deal. You're really never going further than that. But I've noticed on the couch and different areas that I'm using it, or if I'm using it for some other purpose other than just typing on it, you're kind of limited to what the angle is. So I'm not crazy about that. You can't put it and flip it fully around to use in like a tablet mode. And that goes kind of to my next point, which is that when you want to use the iPad in just its standard mode, meaning like this and no case at all, it has no protection around it. So even though I'm someone who is very careful with my iPads, I don't really like using the iPad by itself in tablet mode just like this because when I'm even laying it on the table or I'm just kind of using it and tossing it on my desk quick or something, it's not protected here, which I like having it protected when I'm not using the case. Now, where else that plays a big factor is not just the fact that it doesn't have a case when you pull it out, but you can't stand the iPad up by itself when it's not attached to this. So as someone who maybe watches a lot of YouTube videos or occasionally even does some gaming maybe where you use an external controller of some sort, when you take it out of this case, you can't stand the iPad up on anything unless you're leaning it against a desk or whatever. And sometimes when you're wanting to watch something or you're wanting to use the iPad even like, for example, you're watching YouTube in bed, I don't always wanna have like a keyboard case on my lap or in my hand when I'm watching something like, I don't know, it's either a case or no case. Maybe that's not a big deal to you. To me, kind of annoying. Another thing I'm not crazy about with this case is that it does not have a function row on the top of the keyboard like the Logitech does with your play, your pause, your volume, your brightness, your home screen. Some people, if you've never had that on an iPad case, probably don't think that's a big deal at all. I love those features on the other case because I use that a lot. I play, I pause, I change my volume, I change brightness occasionally, whatever. It's just nicer being able to do it from here and not having to leave the keyboard than to have to reach up each and every time to do it. Love that side of the Logitech. Wish it would happen on this. Another thing some people may not be crazy about is the fact that it's $300. The case is basically 30 35% of the actual cost of the iPad in general. $300 for a case for an iPad that's only a thousand, seems like a lot of money. It's built nice, so I like that side of it, but at the end of the day, is it $300 worth? I don't know. You see, the biggest annoyance of an Apple Pencil is that when you have it magnetized, yes, it charges and yes, it's convenient, but when you close an iPad and the pencil's like this, this is a really annoying spot that continues to fall off. When you grab your keyboard and your iPad and you're carrying it, or you're putting it in a book bag, this always wants to fall off. Probably watching this video being like, yes, that drives me crazy. I got a solution for you people. This little guy, this is not sponsored, should be. It's called the Stylus Sling. I found this and I'll make sure I link it below. This is awesome and this can be used on both cases. This little guy right here, goes right on the case itself. Doesn't mess with the design at all. As you can see, it still can shut just like normal. Doesn't mess anything up. But now you have the option right here. Just put the pencil right there and out of the way. Super convenient, super clean. Then when you do want to use it, then you could just, you know, get to a place, put it there to charge, use it like crazy. But when you're going to put it away in your backpack, boom, out of the way, never worrying about it falling out stays in there super snug things like i think 20 bucks or something the best little invention ever i've told like five or six different people about it they've all gotten it they all say it's amazing it works just as good in the logitech as well speaking of the logitech let's talk about that so this is the logitech combo case so here are some of the things i really really like about this case the first one and is the one that i talked about that to me is actually one of the biggest pros is the fact that it has a case itself for the ipad when you disconnect yourself with just a simple magnet like you see here, when you disconnect this, the iPad is still in a very nice, convenient, low profile case that still has a stand on the back of it. It protects the case, but it also allows you to be able to use the iPad a little bit more efficiently, in my opinion, in just standard tablet mode. I find myself very often using this on my lap or on a desk or whatever I want and using it to watch videos or maybe using it in this mode here to be able to write on it, which you can't do with the iPad Magic Keyboard because when you take it out, it's just the iPad, so you're having to hold it. I love being able to use this in just this standard form without any sort of case having to be reattached or having it be 
you know, prone to drops and breaking it. And then when you're in this mode, you simply take that same little kickstand that is used when the iPad is in its standard form. And that's what gives you your keyboard angle. And once again, you can have the angle wherever you want it to be, depending on how you want to work. And you're not limited on the angle that the Magic Keyboard is. Another really nice feature of this standalone case like this for the iPad is that if you are someone that uses Sidecar a lot with your Mac, if you're unfamiliar with Sidecar, Sidecar allows you to basically use this as an external monitor. If you're using the Magic Keyboard, you basically have to have the keyboard next to it as well with the Sidecar up and that's your external monitor. If you use Sidecar a lot, you can just ditch the keyboard here, put this right next to your laptop, and then instantly have Sidecar next to it, but just the stand by itself, just really conveniently located. It looks great, very clean, and it acts as a secondary monitor for you, which you can't do with the keyboard case in the same way. Having that next to you is not nearly as good as just this nice clean look here. Nice feature though, if you're someone that uses that a lot. Both of these keyboards though, use the smart connector on the iPad to just instantly connect with it, magnetizes it, and that is also what powers the keyboard so you don't have to worry about external power. Another really nice thing about this keyboard, like I said, is that this one actually has a function row on it. So you have your volume up, your volume down, lock, play, pause, skip, keyboard brightness and display brightness all accessible from here. So instead of having to reach up to adjust your volume, you could just do it like you naturally would with a laptop. Just being really used to that from a laptop perspective makes it easy to transition to know that those things are still in the exact same spots that you're used to is nice. In terms of the keyboard, well, that's really nice too. It's still a very soft feeling keyboard. It sounds really nice like this. Still feels great. I don't really think that this one feels better or worse than the other one. It feels a little different. I'd say this one feels a little bit softer. The keys are a little bit flatter. I personally like the typing experience actually better on this keyboard. I feel like it feels just very natural and easy to use. The trackpad as well, just as easy to use, doesn't feel like there's one that's better than the other. It's nice having kind of that individual keyboard brightness on the actual keyboard in general, which is nice. You can kind of adjust how bright you want that to be. So I really like that. It still obviously has your cut out here for the Apple Pencil to charge right on there. As you see, it kind of just protrudes, the case protrudes out a little bit and this just slicks right in there. Once again, for the Logitech case, I'd also recommend this amazing little stylus sling. This one I actually put right on the little kickstand part here for the keyboard and it still shuts and magnetizes just as it should. Doesn't call, cause anything to be any different, but then it allows you once again to just put that right in there and you have a nice clean setup. I think you can also get these in other colors. So I got black because of the Magic Keyboard. I might get myself, I think they make a gray one actually instead, just to kind of be a little bit cleaner, but really nice having that, I'm telling you. Grabbing this is much easier and not having to worry about than that stylus. So what do I not like about this keyboard? Honestly, there's not much I don't like. I think it basically checks all the boxes that I would want in a keyboard case. Really the only thing I found myself occasionally saying is that it takes a little bit longer to just get set up. Now I'm really nitpicking here, so keep that in mind. This is all very, very flush and nice. Like they built it beautifully. So there's no sort of like protruding lines. It's just like, it's built really, really nice. It feels amazing, looks really clean. But because it is built so perfectly, there's really not an easy way to just like grab the case and open it. And when you go to kind of take it out, I find myself a lot having to kind of like push down the screen a little bit or try to like, find the spot to open it. Then once that's open, you still have the kickstand open, which once again is built so well that you kind of have to find that as well. As comparison, like we talked about with the Magic Keyboard, boom, and you're working. Tiny little thing, but I have found it's a little bit annoying. So which keyboard case do I like better? If I had to put all my pros and cons together, I'd say that I like this one better for the type of work that I do. Most Importantly, really that detaching of the iPad and using it in tablet mode with a protected case. I find myself using the iPad a lot outside of the keyboard as well. So being able to kind of pop that off and use it and not feel like I have a, just an open iPad and I can't have like a case and the kickstand and all that, I find that I like that better. I will say that I do like the ease of use of just popping this open and getting to work right away. I like the sleekness of this. I love the pass through charging, but I'd say for the fact that this is $300 and this is $200, 
I think this is a better bang for the buck, but it's really about preference. If you do nothing other than just use a keyboard case all the time, then you might like this better because it's even more slick and clean and easy to use and just get right to work. But if you're someone that uses the iPad for some other purposes, specifically using the Apple Pencil to take notes and to constantly disconnect from the keyboard, then I would say go with this. But either way, you'll be happy with both, but Hopefully this review gave you a little bit of information in terms of some of the things I like between them both. I would say don't look at any other options except for these two, even though there are some companies coming out with some new things yet, I haven't tested those, but these I think are definitely the best keyboard cases for the iPad right now. If you're someone that has never experimented with the keyboard case at all and you're contemplating whether or not you use it, I'd say give it a try. I found that this makes the user experience and the productivity experience for the iPad just night and day difference. Being able to use this as a legit computer replacement for some people, especially with the typing and all that is just a game changer. But if you're someone that just uses the iPad for watching YouTube and occasionally checking some emails here and there, then maybe you don't need either. This is your decision, not mine. Thanks for watching.